What's the one thing that every great poker player has in common? They've all fallen asleep to my voice. I'm Phil Galfond, and today I'm gonna to do something that I've been waiting a long time to do. You know, I always wondered why with my abilities, am I only the most successful poker coach in history? Why have I not done more? And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, Jason Kuhn, and he reminded me that, you know, early in his career, he watched my training videos. What if instead of catching him in his early 20s, I had taught him 10 years prior? Um, what if I had taught him 20 years prior? Would he have only 44 million in career earnings? I don't think so. I think Jason really could have made something of himself had I caught him much earlier. And that's not his fault, it's my fault. How much of a disservice was I doing you by waiting until you could gamble to teach you gambling? So today I'm gonna read to you a story that we all know, a classic really, but a story that we were all taught a little bit too late. This is the story of the three little fish and the big bad shark. Once upon a time, there was an old mother fish who had three little fish. As they grew up, she realized there was not enough room in their home aquarium for all of them. So she decided to send them out into the ocean to seek their fortunes. The fish, out on their own for the first time, realized they were gonna have to make a home for themselves. The first little fish built his aquarium out of preflop charts. They were easy to find, basically lying around everywhere. And they were simple to build with. You just stick them together and there you are. He was proud he finished his new home so quickly, which left him plenty of time to give his two cents on the latest and greatest poker drama on Twitter. The second little fish built his aquarium out of blind aggression. It was intimidating, which he knew would keep others out. Plus, it was pretty easy. He threw it together in a matter of hours. Together, the first two fish made fun of their brother, the third little fish, who had always been diligent, calculating, thorough. He worked tirelessly on his aquarium, making small improvements that frankly seemed pointless to his brothers. I can't believe he's still working on that thing, they teased their brother. We finished ours weeks ago, and he's supposed to be the smart one. Laser focused on his studies, the third fish didn't even bother to respond. One day, the big bad shark sailed past the aquariums and saw the first little fish inside, hiding behind his basic preflop charts. Thinking it would make a mighty meal, the shark tapped on the glass and said, little fish, little fish, let me in. But the little fish saw the shark's flashing teeth through the keyhole and said, no way, Mr. Shark, I won't give in. The shark said, then I'll tap and I'll tap and I'll crack your walls down. And so the shark tapped harder and harder. And within seconds, the first little fish's fragile little strategy cracked and crumbled. As his home came crashing down, the first little fish rushed to the safety of his brother's aquarium. The second fish told him not to worry. No fish he'd ever come across had gotten through his blind aggression. You'll be safe in here, he said. The big bad shark followed his prey to home number two. He tapped the glass and said, little fish, little fish, let me in. The two fish replied, no way, Mr. Shark, we won't give in. The shark warned them again, then I'll tap and I'll tap and I'll crack your walls down. The shark tapped and the glass tapped back. The shark rammed into the glass as hard as he could and was thrown backwards. He'd never run into this kind of aggression before. So the shark reevaluated and came up with a plan. He tapped the glass and then quickly moved out of the way and waited. Soon enough, the glass began to shake. The aggression was pushing back with nothing to push against. After a while, it shattered into a million little pieces and the two fish fled to the safety of the third aquarium. The big bad shark chased the two fish down the reef and almost caught them, but they made it inside the third fish's home. The two little fish were very frightened, thinking that the shark wanted to eat them, and that was very true. However, the third little fish had spent many weeks preparing for the big bad shark. He didn't build his aquarium out of a single material, like preflop charts or aggression. The third fish laid a foundation of theoretical knowledge. He built up from there, adding balanced ranges, patience, and empathy. He tapped on hand reading, proper bet sizing, a strong mindset. He applied bankroll management. He prioritized sleep 
worked on his health. He never bet for comfort to make the hand easier to play. He didn't make plays based on emotion, yet he didn't try to stuff his emotions down either. He accepted his feelings and he made the right plays in spite of them. He thought through every play that he made, trying to understand the why behind both his actions and the actions of his opponents. He found enough turn check raises on each and every board, which is really difficult. He did not chase losses. He quit when he needed to quit. He never left his range vulnerable to being run over at any point. He never lent anybody money, never lent anybody money. And he didn't play on ultimate bet. That's, the, um, that's what his house was made out of. Still, the big bad shark tapped on the glass and said, little fish, little fish, let me in. The three fish replied in unison, no way, Mr. Shark, we won't give in. Then I'll tap and I'll tap and I'll crack your walls down. The shark tapped and he tapped harder, but no matter how hard he tapped, the aquarium stood strong. He tried tapping every wall of it, looking for a leak anywhere, but not even the tiniest crack appeared. The big bad shark was enraged. After an hour of trying, he turned away with his head hung down. Not only would he be left hungry, but he had been beaten. Just as the shark was about to swim away, he heard a door open behind him. It was the third fish with two powerful weapons in his fins, the harpoon of balance and the mindset net. The third fish had spent so much time preparing himself against an attacker that he had become a hunter himself. The fish captured the shark in his net, and the shark began to pout, little fish, little fish, let me out. The first two little fish looked up to their big brother. They understood now what he was doing all of those hours and days. They wanted to become a hunter just like him, though, as it would turn out, they'd never wanted enough to put in the work. The end. Or is it the beginning? Today is the day that you decide what the rest of your life is going to look like. Do you want to be weak or do you want to be strong? Do you want to be prey or do you want to be a predator? <sighs> you are welcome. I'm sure you're sound asleep now. I hope I've left you with some things to think about and I hope you're not going to simply settle for 44 million in career earnings. Uh, you don't have to be Jason Kuhn. Uh, you, can, you can be more. I will see you next time with another story. Until then, this is your coach, Phil Galfond. Happy April 1st.